The M2 Ultra's Geekbench 6 benchmarks are in, and the CPU ones are about as expected, but what wasn't is the GPU benchmarks in the Metal Compute. But before we get into this, I feel like we should actually talk about one of the things that doesn't get discussed that much. What are Apple's GPU cores? If you notice, the M2 Ultra comes in 64 and 76 GPU cores, but if you look at an NVIDIA GPU, like a RTX 480, it has something like 8,700 some GPU cores. I feel like this is never discussed how these are like and how they're different and how they relate to each other. So let's talk about that. To put it pretty lightly, there has been quite a bit written about Apple Silicon and its unified memory. Just as a quick refresher, its system memory is not divided into two different pools for CPU and GPU using RAM and VRAM, but instead shares the same pool of memory. This can be very beneficial as it simplifies system design and can reduce memory latency, but also has the potential to limit the maximum performance of individual components. Overall, unified memory is much more efficient because of less data duplication, and it has the ability to dynamically allocate RAM as it needs to to the GPU and CPU, and there's a faster communication between the GPU and CPU. Unified memory is not a new design, not even to the Macintosh platform, where Intel Macs like this one use an integrated Intel GPU that uses a shared memory model. In fact, you can even find it on old video game consoles like the N64 and the Xbox 360 and pretty much every new console under the sun, the PlayStation 4, the PlayStation 5, and the Xbox Series whatever. I always forget the names of those. And on that note, they really should give that PlayStation guy who names the consoles a raise, the PlayStation 1, the PlayStation 2, the PlayStation 3. That man is a f***ing legend. In the Apple Silicon universe, GPUs are described by their core count. And for Apple, in its infinite wisdom, makes almost zero attempt ever to explain these. So that's what we're going to attempt to do, understand general GPU hierarchy. And this will be a fairly surface level explanation of Apple GPUs. At the highest level is the graphics processing unit, aka the GPU, which is a parallel processor, which is optimized for multiple instructions to be executed in parallel, as opposed to traditional CPUs being optimized for sequential processing. Data is funneled into streaming multiprocessors, which in Apple's vernacular are referred to as cores. We could stop here, but let's go a little deeper. With Apple Silicon, at least with the M1 series, each core is split into 16 execution units, and each of those has 8 arithmetic logic units, or ALUs, for example, the top-end M1 Ultra has 64 cores, which means it has 1,024 execution units, or 8,192 ALUs. While editing this video, I found somewhat reliable information. The M2 Ultra still uses the same shader count per execution unit, or the same amount of ALUs, that's interchangeable terms, and that is 8. So the total count comes to be 9,000, 728 total for the M2 Ultra. When you look at an NVIDIA GPU like the RTX 3080 and see that it has 8,960 CUDA cores, these are the ALUs and not the same as Apple's GPU cores. ALUs are the fundamental computation units optimized for efficient arithmetic and logic operations, meaning they're more of an array of specialized processing units. Due to the sheer number of ALUs in a GPU, they're able to perform a large number of operations in parallel. For certain types of computing tasks, they vastly outperform a CPU, such as graphics processing, but also in computational biology and physics, machine learning, deep learning, video processing, data viz, and of course, crypto. You can correct me if I'm wrong because I'm not much of a PC gamer, but I strongly suspect why NVIDIA prefers to count its ALUs, its CUDA cores, over, say, the GPU cores or the streaming multiprocessors is simply because they've been able to increase, per execution context, how many ALUs they can cram in. So this is a good way for them to quickly communicate 
how much of a step up each generation of GPU is. GPUs are quite complex, so comparing ALUs is not a great way to gauge performance against differing architectures. One of the strongest selling points for NVIDIA is just how good they are with their computing power as evidenced by their prices during the GPU crisis and why people weren't stockpiling M-series computers to mine bitcoins or perform deep machine learning. Now let's take a second to talk about the Geekbench 6 M2 Ultra benchmarks. This is not going to be a deep dive into the M2 Ultra's GPU, but rather just its compute in only Geekbench 6. The M2 Ultra is about 38% faster than the M1 Ultra in metal compute whereas the M2 Max over the M1 Max is about 21%. Both the M2 Ultra and M2 Max have had their GPU core count increase by 18.75%. This trend also continues into OpenCL, although not nearly as drastic. To be clear, synthetic benchmarks can only tell you so much. This very well could be a quirk of Geekbench 6, favoring the M2 Ultra. Or perhaps the M2 Ultra can make use of that increased bandwidth over the M2 Max. For those curious about this anomaly, I suggest keep your eyes wide because there's probably going to be some new information, or if it's not already out, why this is the case. Apple is still a generation behind in its top-end GPUs, but it does make you wonder how the rumored M2 Extreme could have performed as it would have topped out at 152 GPU cores, but it would have probably started at maybe $20,000. It's easy to speculate why Apple probably acts this SOC. Even if the M2 Extreme somehow achieved 2x the performance, this still would have only been roughly that of a NVIDIA GeForce RTX 480 in OpenCL. It's very unlikely Apple will catch its competition anytime soon, especially at an attractive price point. Sadly, Apple has little interest in dedicated GPUs, at least for now. Check out this recent clip from John Turnis, Apple's Senior Vice President of Hardware Engineering. I think, I mean, fundamentally, we've, we've built our architecture around this shared memory model and that optimization. And so it's not entirely clear to me how you'd bring in another GPU and, and do so in a way that is optimized for our systems. It just hasn't been, it hasn't been a direction that we've wanted to pursue. What's interesting about this statement is Apple has actually already shipped integrated GPUs with dedicated GPUs in its MacBooks. I've also mentioned this previously before, but Apple has also filed a patent related around integrated and dedicated GPUs for Apple Silicon Macs. My personal takeaway is Apple is just quite frankly not interested in offering third-party GPU support, and that could be for a number of reasons, planned obsolescence, engineering costs, whatever. But the case is, Apple is not going to support third-party GPUs, not with this generation of Mac. Well, I think this is as good a place as any to close out this video. And I'm probably going to get called an NVIDIA fanboy for like the billionth time just because I'm willing to look at what they offer. I have some good content coming for my classic Mac Pro and also my Mac Pro 2019, so stay tuned.